those paper toilet seat covers aren't meant to be used the way many do. Ripping off that flap that looks like a tongue is not the right way. Instead of tearing it off or sticking it at the back, let that flap sit in the bowl after putting down the cover. Flushing will allow the suction to pull down the flap and take it away. You no longer need to touch it after using it. Ooh, that's a relief on so many levels. There isn't much privacy in a public toilet, especially when the door doesn't reach the floor. Those gaps work for ventilation and to stop people from lingering around for too long. It also allows emergency access in case the person inside needs immediate attention. Meanwhile, ceiling fans aren't just for hot days. There's a little switch on top that can change the direction of the fan. The summer setting runs counterclockwise to suck the cooler air up, while the winter setting moves clockwise, pushing the warmer air down. Full signal bars on your cell doesn't mean you've got the best signal at all. Every phone manufacturer uses their own algorithm that senses the strength level of the available signal. From that, they can show as many or as few bars as they choose. There's quite a bit of difference between the bars from one phone to another. Me? I prefer chocolate bars. Pre-rinsing your dishes before putting them into the dishwasher might be all for nothing. Most modern dishwashers have sensors inside to sense how dirty your plates are. This allows them to wash the dishes with a controlled amount of water. Scrape any solid food away and stack properly, allowing the dishwasher to do the hard work. That little disc that's underneath bottle caps isn't just a leftover part of the production process. It creates an even tighter seal with a lid. So even if you turn the bottle upside down, the liquid doesn't leak out everywhere. That plastic disc keeps carbonated sodas carbonated for longer as well. So keep it if it's going back into the fridge. Placing a wooden spoon across a pot of cooking pasta can prevent the water from boiling over. This will destabilize the bubbles when they contact the spoon, preventing a spillover onto the stovetop. Now you tell me. A progress bar at 50% doesn't mean half of the file has been downloaded. Almost all of the files could have been downloaded, or none. They're just there to ease your mind. Internet speeds and network availability are the keys to how quickly a download will complete. The computer's hard drive decides how to process and put the files where they need to be, which will run slower if it's old or full. To make the perfect smoothie, put the liquids in first, then add any ingredients after you've put milk, coconut water, coffee, or yogurt. This will allow the perfect swirl to blend everything properly. That hole inside the pasta fork stirrer doesn't only drain water out, it's a great measuring tool for how much spaghetti to cook per person. The hole is the recommended amount for a single serving. Speaking of openings, metal zippers have a hidden lock built in. Wasn't that clever? Putting the zipper downwards creates a lock with the teeth of the zipper. If left in the upwards direction, it's free to uh, move around. Pressing the crosswalk button won't always make the walk signal come up. These buttons can be divided into three categories. The first needs to be pressed. The second won't work. And the third requires a push of the button to activate that walk signal after a certain time in the day. It all depends on what city you're in, the time of day, and where you are in that city. I wish there was a fourth category that would squirt water at the person next to you when pressed. But hey, that's just me. Sticky notes are meant to be removed from the block at a side angle. Pulling from the bottom just makes the paper curl up and not as sticky over time. The drawer at the bottom of your oven isn't meant to be a storage locker for all the fry pans, pots, and baking trays. It's actually a warming drawer. This will keep hot foods at a nice temperature ready for serving. Tin foil and plastic wrap boxes have a special design on there to hold that roll in place. A cardboard tab on each end that works like a lock. Push those tabs in and the roll will stay inside the box. That little pocket on your jeans wasn't designed for loose change or keys. They're originally designed for the pocket watch in the 1890s. Around those pocket areas, there are rivets sticking out as well. They're there to help reinforce the sensitive areas of the jean that get the most wear and tear. Repeatedly pushing the closed door button on a U.S. elevator isn't going to make it close any sooner. In 1990, the U.S. passed a Disabilities Act for elevators, which meant that elevators had to ensure that someone with a disability had time to get inside one. The only people who can bypass this are emergency workers in building maintenance. They'll have keys or even special codes that make that button operational. 
Erasers usually have two different colored sides, pink and blue. The pink is for the pencil, but so is the blue. The blue side is made for thicker pages, like what an artist would use. It's not made to remove pen ink, as many people believe. That's because people who write in pen don't make mistakes. Nah, I'm just kidding. So, grocery carts have loops for a reason. You don't want to put your jacket in your cart next to a bunch of potatoes and onions, do ya? Hang it on the loop instead. It's there to help you organize your cart better. Carts also have a cool section at the bottom. Whenever your cart's full, just lift it up and attach a shopping basket for extra purchases. Lift up the whole metal thing, sit your basket on the horizontal bar above the wheels, and secure it with those handy hooks. If you've got some pesky parsley stuck in your teeth, try this tip. It can be hard to get it all out with loose floss. You need more tension. Just tie it in a knot. Toothpaste stripes may seem a bit weird. It's just a marketing trick. Back in the 70s, a leading toothpaste brand added a blue stripe to show that their toothpaste had double action. Solid white toothpaste worked just as well. But those blue bristles on your toothbrush actually make sense. They gradually lose their color over time. When the blue's faded, it's time to change your toothbrush. Ever notice that tiny hole on the bottom of a padlock? Its hidden purpose is to drain water out to keep it from rusting. It's also the place to lubricate a padlock. A drop of oil in there will make it open and close way easier. Those ridges on the edge of dimes aren't just for show. People used to shave off the edges, then melt the edges down into new coins. But thanks to the new design, it's easy to tell if someone's been shaving the edges off. If you still struggle with peeling an orange, here's another way of opening it. First, cut off the top and bottom. Make a slit on the side and pull it open. That knobbly bit sticking out of the cap of your favorite cream is there for a reason. These tubes are usually sealed with foil. So unless you love breaking your nails trying to open them, just flip the cap over and push. The tiny rubber disc under every bottle cap isn't just for seeing if you want a lifetime supply of soda. It's what keeps your drink all nice and bubbly. The lid keeps the liquid inside. The rubber disc keeps the gas inside. Until you drink it. <laughs> if you use the blue side of your eraser to erase pen, your notebooks are probably all full of holes. The blue side's there for when you need to erase something on much thicker paper. It works on pencil and even ink, as long as the paper's thick enough. Your bobby pins might not stay in place if the grooves aren't facing the right way. They should always be on the bottom, close to your head. Still coming loose? Put a squeeze of hairspray right onto the bobby pin before you put it in your hair. Many glass bottles usually have some sort of indent at the bottom. It's handy if you want to be fancy. Put your thumb in the indent and pour away. The technical name for this little dude is a punt. Those sugar sticks at your local coffee stand are ready to be opened in a new and easier way. Look how happy they are! Try splitting it right down the middle. No more sugar on your fingers. No more tiny little paper bit. Even your coffee's happier. Your cotton rounds pack has those strings on it, so you can hang it on a handy hook in the bathroom. But there's no need to loosen and tighten back up again every time. Check out the bottom of the pack. It has a perforated line. Tear it open carefully, and you're good to go. Doorknobs are usually made of brass, bronze, or some other copper alloy. Why? They're antibacterial, so they stop microbes from spreading. Just a couple of hours, and the pesky microbes are gone. But don't forget to wash your hands anyway. Bottles have long necks for a reason. Hold the neck, not the bottle, if you want to enjoy a cold drink. Two zips too much? Maybe, but they come in handy as a clever anti-theft device. Just lock them together. Now no one can open your backpack. Don't have a lock on you? You can also tie them together with some string or even just a paper clip. Anything to slow those pickpockets down. That tiny little button on the back of a shirt collar is used to hold your tie in place. You don't want your tie trying to escape back there. Shoe manufacturers care about their customers. 
So most running shoes now have a special anti-blister system pre-installed. Hmm. Sounds intense, but it's basically just that extra hole on top of your sneakers. Make a loop with the extra hole, inserting the lace backwards. Cross your laces and put them through the loops. Now pull the laces down to lock your foot in place. Now run! This is the right way to use a hairbrush. Don't use it horizontally. Hold it in a vertical position. The bristles are lined up vertically. If you hold the comb horizontally, then these bristles begin to bend. You can check it yourself and feel how convenient it is this way. You enter the room and take off your sunglasses. Where are you going to hide them? Are you going to hold them in your hand or hang the glasses on your shirt collar? Or maybe put them in your pocket? The best way is to put the glasses in the breast pocket so the lenses look inside and only one temple sticks out. Your glasses will be protected from damage this way. According to the rules of etiquette, you must always let out those who are leaving the room, building, or elevator first, only then enter. This simple rule helps to avoid collisions and awkward situations. Do you have paint rollers in your house? Let's say you're doing repairs and painting walls. See how a thick layer of paint gets on the roller? People clean it in different ways. Someone washes it off with water or scrapes the paint off with a knife or paper. But there is an easier way. You can buy special squeegees for paint rollers. Their blade shape fits the roller perfectly and scrapes off all the dirt. Toothpicks are always on the table at restaurants and cafes. People use them incorrectly when picking their teeth with them after eating. The correct and cultured way is to go into the restroom and carefully pull out all the food. You don't have to tear off the cover layer from the dishwasher tablet. This layer is tiny. Just put it in the tank and the water will dissolve the cover. You know this feeling of happiness when you're hungry and find some pizza in the fridge? How are you going to reheat it? You can use a microwave or an oven, but there is a great alternative way. Heat a frying pan and put a piece of pizza on the side of it. Add a little water to the opposite side, then cover the pan with a lid or foil. Be careful here. After a couple of minutes, take it out and taste the pizza. It's perfect, right? Don't brush your teeth with an electric toothbrush using fast movements. This device should move back and forth smoothly. These shoulder straps with buttons on your jacket have a purpose. They were invented to keep your backpack straps tightly on your shoulders, preventing them from slipping off. Try it yourself. Unhook the straps, put on the backpack, and attach them back. Keep the box with the hole up when you're pouring juice or milk out of it. Then there will be less splashing. Always put the toilet lid down before flushing it. Small, imperceptible particles of dirty water splash and pollute the entire space when you keep it open. Many people have a seasoning shaker in their kitchen, and most just shake it to pour spices on food. If you are one of them, stop right there. Just flip it over and scroll the top cover with holes. Spices will easily fall out without any obstacles. Do you have bad breath? How are you going to check it? You can breathe on the palm and feel it, but this method is not effective. It's much better to lick your wrist. Don't touch it with the tongue tip. Lick it with the middle part. Smell it and yeah, that's what people get when you're talking to them. One of the ways to keep your breath fresh is to stay silent. When you talk a lot, your mouth dries up. Without moistening with saliva, many bacteria accumulate in it. And this is what gives you bad breath. There's an empty space between the panes and the oven door. You can stick a brush in there to clean the window. The entrance to this space is at the bottom of the door. Open the lower shelf, then push the brush through the hole. There are many ways to separate the yolk from the white in a raw egg. You can use special spoons or do it with a bottle. Someone slowly pours egg white from the shell. None of the methods are easy, especially if you're doing it for the first time. But you can extract the yolk much more efficiently without using any additional equipment. Just pour the raw egg onto a plate and take out the yolk with your own hands. But before that, oil your fingers with garlic. Did you know that it's better to wash the rice in cold water before cooking it? Water helps to separate the dry grains from each other. 
During cooking, the washed rice grains don't stick together. This makes the rice fluffy and delicious. The easiest way to peel garlic is to put it in the microwave. Cut off the tip and leave it in the microwave for 20 to 30 seconds. Done! You can peel it easily now. <sighs> it's finally the weekend and you decide to go out for dinner. You opt for Chinese food because, duh, it's so delicious. You're seated at a lovely window table and handed the menu and a pair of chopsticks. Now you're faced with two options. After taking them out of their little paper envelope, what is it that you do? Option A. Do you split them straight down the middle after some struggle? Option B. Do you break them from the tip where they are glued together, like the internet has taught you? Well, according to mainstream online knowledge, option B will leave you with half-broken chopsticks. As it happened some time ago, a myth regarding the correct way to use chopsticks appeared on the internet. It claimed that the little marks on the tips of your chopsticks were there to help you to separate the top part. After that, you could turn this piece into a pillow to rest your chopsticks on during the meal. Well, as it turns out, having something to put your chopsticks on is very important. But breaking the top end of a wooden chopstick is not how it's supposed to go. So, once again, you arrive at the restaurant, make your order, and your waiter hands you a pair of wooden chopsticks. This time, you follow option A, breaking the chopsticks in two. And if you really want something to put your chopsticks on, just ask the waiter. They most likely have what you need. Me? I'm the daredevil type, so I just put them on my plate. Now that this is covered, you might spend the rest of the night trying to figure out how to hold the chopsticks correctly. The Chinese have been using chopsticks since 1200 BCE. I was using a fork back then. They started out using them as cooking utensils. But it wasn't until 400 CE that they started using them at the table for eating. This custom spread around, and at one point, the Japanese created disposable bamboo chopsticks that we use today. 40% of the world's population use their hands to eat, 30% use knives and forks, and the remaining 30% use chopsticks. Most chopstick users are from the East and Southeast Asia, with China, Korea, and Japan leading the race. And just in case you're wondering, yes, there is more than one type of chopsticks in the world. For example, chopsticks in China are the thickest and longest of them all. They're often made from bamboo or melamine and have thick and flat tips. The material is slippery and smooth, which makes holding them even more difficult. Now, say you're having dinner with native chopstick users. Here's what you should do. Plan where you'll rest your chopsticks between bites. You don't want to make a mess, right? So don't put them on the table, you'll get sauce all over the place. Definitely don't place them upright in your rice bowl. I'm not even going to start on how impolite that looks. The best solution would be to ask for a chopstick pillow or a holder and put it next to your plate. But if that's not an option, you can lean the tips of your chopsticks on the rim of your plate or bowl. Also, pay attention to what your chopsticks are pointing at once you put them down. It shouldn't be the people you're dining with. That can be interpreted as disrespectful in certain cultures. Now, here's how you're supposed to hold your chopsticks. Here's your hand. And a pair of chopsticks. Try holding them like you would normally hold a pen or pencil. Take a mental picture of what it looks like. Now, never do this again. Try doing this. The thumb over the chopstick, under the chopstick, the tip of your finger. Got it? You have to place your thumb and index finger on the top stick, your middle finger serving as both support for the upper chopstick and as a holder for the bottom one, together with your ring finger. It might sound difficult, but it's really not. Just make sure to get some practice. And remember, if your finger starts sliding down the chopsticks, hold them as close to the top end as possible. This way, you can open your chopsticks wider. If you're almost a pro at handling chopsticks, you can use them while cooking. Just don't use metal ones, though. They are good heat conductors and will also most likely scratch the bottom of your pan. There are other types of chopsticks you can use. They are very good in case you decide to cook tempura or fritters that you need to keep turning from one side to the other. And last but not least, never wash your chopsticks in the washing machine. Just don't. They'll probably end up clogging the machine. Wash them by hand, the way previous generations did. Now, moving on to other things you might have been doing wrong. Hey, I don't mean to criticize. I'm just going to point out a few improvement opportunities on things you might have been doing badly, like microwaving leftover food. How many times have you taken your food out of the microwave only to discover it's still cold in the middle? 
That's because microwaves heat the food closer to the sides of the plate first. Often, the heat doesn't have enough time to reach the middle of your, let's say, delicious spaghetti bolognese. It's more effective to spread your food closer to the sides, leaving some empty space in the middle. There you have it, warm food without much effort. And since we've been talking about food, let's talk chicken wings. Most of us take one, scorching hot, with both hands and take a big bite. But there's an easier way to eat it. Grab the wing by the two little bones, twist them, and slowly pull the bones out. Don't worry, the chicken won't feel it. You'll get a meaty, bone-free chicken wing. After all this eating, make sure you brush your teeth. But make sure you're doing it right. Choose a soft or medium bristle toothbrush. It won't harm your gums. And instead of repeating mechanical up and down movements, choose a 45 degree angle and go with it. This way you'll clean all that sticky plaque. Blech. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.